including Islam, and all scriptures, including the Holy Quran, they came to change this perception, to say that when it comes to God, God does not judge and evaluate people according to their income, according to their wealth, neither their family or their influence. It's according to their personality. A person is important in Islam, in the eyes of God, if he carries a great personality, great character, according to his or her service, their commitment to their cause, to the cause of the humanity. That person is going to be considered great in the eyes of God. God does not look at your financial statement, nor your bank record. He doesn't care about that. He looks at your heart, your commitment, your service, your dedication to the humanity. That's what is matter. And God says, if it wasn't for the fear, walawla, if it wasn't that we fear that the entire population of earth are going to sway towards materialism and wealth and they run after only money, we would have given the wealth of this earth, the entire wealth of this earth, only to the non-believers. Only to the non-believers. To prove that the wealth, the, the wealth of the earth has no value in the eyes of God. But God says, I fear that all people are going to be non-believers. None is going to survive because they think that this is the sign of success. If you become wealthy, only wealthy, that is the great sign of success. They're going to leave faith. This is one of the most staggering verses in the Quran. This verse in Surah Al-Zukhruf, chapter 43. If it wasn't for the fear that we fear that the Nas, the population of earth, they're going to gather around disbelief and rejection of faith, we would have given and bestowed upon every non-believer huge wealth, huge properties. The roofs of their properties and homes, it's going to be decorated and ornamented with gold. Sukufan min fidla, gold and silver. Wa ma'arija alayha yattakiun. Wa ma'arija alayha yadharun wa li buyutihim. Ma'arij are stairs. Stairs, one of the properties is huge, it's a tower. When they have a tower, a huge skyscrapers and tower, it has a stairs. So this is signifies the, the greatness of the building. The building is so magnificent and huge, it has a stairs. The palace has not only one entrance, but many entrances. A palace, a mansion. This is why it is plural, not ba'ab, but abwab. This is signifies is that we would give them the entire wealth to prove that wealth has no value. The wealth of this earth, material wealth, has no value in the eyes of God. Yes, wealth is going to have value when you serve the nation, when you save lives with it, when it becomes a source of construction, a source of reformation, you reform your society, you save the hungry, the poor, the needy, you advance the cause of the humanity, then it has worth. The wealth is going to have worth in the eyes of God. But merely seeking wealth for the sake of being wealthy only has no value in the eyes of God. And it has no advantage and it carries no merits. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to say that use the wealth to build yourself, but don't make it, do not make it the center point of your life. Yes, utilize what God has given you. 
God addresses the wealthiest person on earth at that time, Arun, during the time of Musa. If you have wealth, property, seek to build your hereafter. At the same time, you have to enjoy a relaxed life. It's okay. It's okay to have good life, good house, good living. No problem about that. But the vast majority of your wealth and your focus has to be to build the hereafter, to prepare yourself for the hereafter. Many people ask, why God does not make all the believers wealthy? No, he doesn't. He says, I would not make them wealthy. Because if believers are supposed to be all of them wealthy, then people are going to be driven towards faith out of greed, not out of conviction. Not because they think faith is something good. Because they look at faith as a means of material success, so let's become faithful, let's become religious, let me go to the mosque, because everybody who went, who went to the mosque became wealthy, millionaire. so I will join them. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Yad la saqat al-bala, then God, why is testing us? There is no reason to test. God wants to test us in this life, to see whether we stay with him at the time of poverty, at the time of fear, at the time of hunger, at the time of deprivation, do we stay with him or not? At the time of affluence, all people can worship, no problem. But at the time of poverty and severe test, would they still worship God and stay with him? God wants us to reach faith through difficulties, not ease. Not ease. This is why he does not make believers all of them wealthy. He doesn't. He says the path to faith is not through comfort and ease and wealth and relaxation. It is through struggle. Ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan. You have to struggle, labor, kadhan fa mulaqi. You can't reach him through ease. And therefore, my friends, the more we get attached to materialism, the more we develop depression. This is a proven. America today, we've been told, it's the strongest nation on earth, which I doubt that. Yes, we are strong in military, but in morality, I don't think we are the strongest. Neither in economy, nor in education, nor in healthcare. Yes, in Pentagon, we have the biggest military expenditure, almost $2 billion a day, a day. We have money for that, but for healthcare, we have deficit, alhamdulillah. For education, we have deficit. However, the more we get attached to materialism, to this lower life, to this cheap life, the more we develop anxiety and attachment to this life. And this attachment does not produce other than unhappiness more depression, more worries, more greed, more thinking about what should I eat today, what should I wear, where should I live, what model of car should I drive, what... You would never be able to think about your spiritual advancement, your spiritual nourishment. And the more you detach yourself, detach yourself from materialism, use materialism, but don't get attached to it. Be ready to separate yourself any minute from materialism. Be ready. This is the point why we fast. Because we are attached to food and a drink. Some people cannot survive without coffee in the morning. Or without food, without breakfast, without this type of food, that type of food. Islam came to t teach us that you have to grow. You have to detach yourself for a few hours a day. Few hours, maybe 16, maybe 17, maybe 18 hours a day, maximum. Detach yourself from this. If you are completely dependent on materialism, you cannot grow. You cannot grow. You fail. You cannot free yourself from these chains of materialism. Once you free yourself, you'll be able to fly. You'll be able to become lighter and 
you can reach وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ the kingdom of this heaven that around us a friend was giving an example the other day he said I live in a very polluted city very polluted there is a smog there is you know dirt in the air and we don't see the stars so one day I went to the desert you know two hours of drive outside that city and I looked up in the evening and I said wow look at this where is this this is always there these stars and galaxies they are always there but in the city you cannot see them why because there is a layer of a smog and pollution the same thing in the spiritual realm we cannot see God because there is pollution pollution of materialism pollution of attachment to this life to our wealth to what we eat what we enjoy what we wear we are obsessed with that so we can't see we can't see the malakut unless we have self-control this is why we fast why do we fast so you develop self-control over your desires you curb the desire once you curb your desires you can see the stars you can see the galaxies you can see what is around you you can see the beauty this is one of the reasons of working on ourselves, polishing ourselves, inner selves during the month of Ramadan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asri inna al-insana lafi khusrin illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytah al-tayyibin al-tahirin.